I believe that the time is coming for AVAX. I think that AVAX during the next bull run could very well potentially reach the price of at least $300. And even though that isn't financial advice, let me explain why I believe that could very well be the case. First of all, I do believe that AVAX is fundamentally fantastic. As we all know, AVAX is the native cryptocurrency for Avalanche. And when it comes to Avalanche, I do believe that it is one of the best layer one blockchains out there. Avalanche is fast, it's scalable, it's secure, and it's highly decentralized. And something that I find very incredible about Avalanche is the fact that as of June 25th, Avalanche had over 1 million active accounts, which I think is something to behold. However, it doesn't end there because if we take a look at the screen right here, we will see that Avalanche has a higher staking ratio than Polkadot, Phantom, Near, and Polygon which I think is something to behold. And also something that I find very fascinating about Avalanche is the fact that it has over 1,200 validators. However, more surprisingly, Avalanche in the past week alone has been able to facilitate over 7.5 million transactions. And here's the thing, when it comes to DeFi, I do believe that Avalanche has one of the best DeFi ecosystems out there. You know, in terms of DeFi, Avalanche has over 310 protocols. And in the past 24 hours, there was over 82,000 active users as well. On Avalanche, you will find amazing DeFi projects like Aave, Trader Joe, GMX, Pangolin, Yieldiac, and much more. But with that being said, I think the cherry on top for me is the fact that Avalanche is ranked number seven in the world in terms of total value locked on DeFi. And I think this right here is a very staggering statistic because what that means right there is that in terms of total value locked, Avalanche actually beats out Cardano, Pulse Chain, Kronos, Solana, Bitcoin, and much more. And by the way, Avalanche also has amazing reviews. For example, if we take a look at this, we will see that Stanny Kulachov who is the founder of Aave, you know, according to him, the Avalanche consensus is well suited for building DeFi applications due to its scalability features, particularly its high throughput and near instant finality. And also, if we take a look at Sergey Nazarov, who is the co-founder of Chainlink Labs, according to him, he says that high speed financial applications are the norm for Web2 and for Web3 to compete and have parity with Web2 you need to have a high speed chain. And he says that Avalanche gets us closer and closer and possibly arriving at parity with the speed of Web2 systems. And I mean, wow, those right there are some very glowing reviews. And I think that if anything showcases how Avalanche is doing the right thing. You know, if they weren't heading in the right direction, if they weren't fundamentally fantastic, there would be no way they would be able to get these type of reviews from extremely reputable individuals, much like Sergey and Stanny. However, besides that point, nowadays, a lot of people, they care about sustainability. And Avalanche is incredibly sustainable, in my opinion. In fact, if we take a look on the screen right here, we will see that according to Crypto Carbon Ratings Institute, you know, they released research, which finds that Avalanche's public blockchain uses 200,000 times less energy than Bitcoin. And that is very impressive. And let's not forget, Avalanche is also focused on the enterprise market. And I think this right here is a very genius move, especially when we consider how the blockchain technology market in the next seven years is anticipated to be worth over $1.4 trillion, which by the way, is going to be largely driven through enterprise adoption. You know, if we take that figure and prediction into account, I truly do believe that Avalanche is doing the right move by being focused on enterprise adoption. So when I consider just how special Avalanche is and when I consider what they are focused on moving forward, I really don't see why its native token called AVAX will have any issues reaching the price of at least $300 during the next bull run. And now that I set that price prediction, some people may think, wow, AVAX at the price of $300? That's crazy. But in my opinion, I don't think it's crazy. And let me explain why. First of all, if AVAX, with its current circulating supply, were to reach the price of $300, it would only have a market cap of around $103 billion. And that may seem like a lot to some people, but in the world of cryptos, I actually don't think it's that much. And the reason why I say that is because, in my opinion, in the past, we have seen many layer one blockchains out there, which I believe are far less fundamentally speaking than Avalanche. You know, we have seen the native cryptocurrency for those blockchains that have reached a market cap of $103 billion and even beyond. For example, if we take a look at BNB, BNB back in 2021 had a market cap of over $108 billion. And when it comes to Ethereum, it had a market cap of over $560 billion. And now that I say that, some people may be thinking, 
you know, what makes you think that AVAX is better than Ethereum and BNB? Some people may be wondering that. And for the people who say that, I will say this. When it comes to BNB, you know, when we take a look at the Binance Smart Chain, the Binance Smart Chain just last year accounted for over 21% of the total crypto hacks, which I think is totally unacceptable. I mean, for as big as the Binance Smart Chain is, in my opinion, I just don't think it's that secure. I mean, how can that many hacks happen on the Binance Smart Chain just last year? I think that's completely ridiculous. I mean, you won't see any of that type of nonsense going on on Avalanche. And also, when it comes to Ethereum, in my opinion, the biggest weakness for Ethereum is the fact that it's not scalable. And yes, you know, Ethereum, it's Ethereum 2.0. Yes, it is now proof of stake and it is no longer proof of work. You know, even though Ethereum is all of that, you know, it still is not scalable. And also, I do believe that the gas fees for Ethereum, they're just absolutely crazy. So with that being said, I think it's fair to assume that at least for me, I just do believe that AVAX is much better than BNB and Ethereum. You know, yes, BNB is much bigger than AVAX. Ethereum is way bigger than AVAX. I get all of that. But I do believe that in terms of fundamentals, I think it just doesn't come close. I think AVAX is on a league of its own. I think the Avalanche blockchain is truly something special. So when I consider how Ethereum is able to reach a market cap of over $560 billion, and when I consider how BNB can reach a market cap of over $108 billion, you know, when I take that all into consideration, I really do believe that why can't AVAX, with its amazing and, in my opinion, far superior fundamentals than Ethereum and BNB, at least reach a market cap of $103 billion. You know, why can't it do that? At least that's the way I view it. I think that AVAX will have no issues reaching high prices during the next bull run. And even though that is just my opinion only, and that is not financial advice, I am very excited for the future of AVAX. And I think Avalanche has so much room in store for it. And if you want to check out a very interesting video, make sure to go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. It's a very fantastic video, and I think you all would really love it.